It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to do a review of 2023 and talk about some of the really amazing things that we've seen in 2023 in the open source community. I feel like I just did some of these videos literally yesterday and it just it flew by so fast and it just as I was going back through the year I was like oh my gosh I mean I things that happened back in January and February of 2023 I feel like happened last week it, it has just gone by so fast and it's been so fun and the first thing I want to do is just say thank you to all of you thank you to the people who have subscribed thank you to my patrons especially you you just really make it worth it for me to keep doing this every week and for me to keep putting in the effort to make these videos for you guys I, I just can't say thank you enough I also want to say thank you to all of the people involved in the open source projects and in the open source community. I know that you do this out of passion for what you do. I know that you put time and sweat and tears and love into the projects that you do. And, and I really and truly appreciate every single thing that you do, everything that you make, everything that you've allowed me to get out there and discover and use and, and just feel so confident in the software that I'm using. I really, truly appreciate it, and I just cannot say thank you enough. As we're kind of leaving 2023 and headed into 2024, I just wanted to kind of do a, a quick review of some of the things that we've talked about and things that I'm looking for, uh, you know, in the future here as we go into 2024. So uh, late last year, one of the, the big topics was really, or early last year, was kind of the move to the Fediverse. Um, different closed source proprietary products that were very, very dependent on a single server and a single person and their, their architecture really started to kind of go in different directions than I was comfortable with. And it, it doesn't matter your political views, your beliefs, anything like that. It, it's for me about data and who owns my data and where my data is being shared and who controls that data. And if you want to run your own version of Mastodon, something that can talk to the Mastodon slash Fediverse system, then Pleroma is a nice place to start. Because when you look at running something like Mastodon, you're talking about a real commitment to make sure that that server stays up and running, a commitment to the hardware and architecture, and it's not easy. So this was a nice ease into the process kind of system that I think lets you get in there and understand it and learn it a little bit before maybe you put up a full Mastodon instance and it's got a really nice clean user interface and it's not super hard to get set up and it's not super tedious to use you just have to go through the steps so I really enjoyed this one I thought this was a great one um, I, the, the project itself is really awesome and I really enjoyed doing this video and, and I think this is a really cool one so if you've been looking at hosting your own Fediverse system this is definitely one you might want to start with and kind of check out. I think it gives you a little bit easier kind of start off in the Mastodon space without having to host an a full Mastodon system right off the bat. Keep in mind that when you run your own Fediverse system at first, it may not use too much resource, it may not use too much memory, but as you get more users signing up, as you start f you know federating with other systems, that federation doesn't mean like it just goes out and pulls the data with an API every time. It pulls a lot of data over to your system and keeps it there. So you need to have those resources and that storage ready. And if you're going to host this for other people, you need to kind of take on that responsibility of making sure that one, their data is safe and secure. Two, that you understand the risks you're taking if you're allowing people you don't know to use your system because you never know what they're going to post or what they might be doing that might be legal or illegal depending on where you live and where you are hosting that server. So keep that in mind as well and be ready to kind of monitor that and take action as needed. You, you can let people do what they want. You can believe. I think everybody should be able to say whatever they feel like saying. That's awesome. But if your government disagrees with you, they don't care about your thoughts. So please keep that in mind whenever you're running one of these systems. I think it's amazing that people run them. I appreciate that they do it, but I try to be very careful about what I post and where I post it. We also talked about authentication. This was such a massive topic for me. I've done Authelia in the past, and I was really interested in doing something a little bit different, and, and covering Authentic really made me feel much more in control of how I set up my systems and having single sign-on on as many of my systems as I can, and I'm still adding to it. 
It's a really, really incredible piece of software. It gets consistent and constant updates. And so far, it has just been blowing me away with its capabilities. Um, really and truly authentic has given me a great single sign-on uh, you know, setup. And once you do a few of them, it kind of becomes pretty easy for you to figure out how to add the next one. I've really enjoyed just adding all my different applications and setting up you know, protection for the ones that don't have a sign-in system built in, but also just adding a single sign-on with two-factor authentication and making it easy for me to log into my applications but still feel secure about it. Um, really a terrific project. The graphical user interface for setting up all your stuff is amazing. They've given you a really great admin panel and the ability to see the applications that you can log into just by logging into Authentic and then have a one-click access is really tremendous. I've, I've just, I can't say enough about how much I really love this project and how great it has been for me personally. Um, I've added a lot of things to it. Uh, my, my Authentic instance is where I set up my wiki for my show notes and I've got Wacamole set up with it and I've got so many different systems set up with it and I'll be adding more throughout the year and some of those will turn into videos that I'll make to help you figure out how to add it as well so I hope you'll be looking forward to that because I am and I think security and privacy are such paramount concepts in this day and age that we can't afford to not have a system like this running so I hope you'll join with me and, and just kind of see how this works there are many other options out there and I may cover those as well in 2024 I think it's important for you to know that you have options and you have choices so I'll definitely be looking into some of those as well when we talk about privacy I've covered a lot of VPN setups in the past and NetMaker, uh, NetBird, PryTunnel there's a whole bunch of them and they're really awesome systems they're amazing for making sure that you've got a nice private secure connection to whatever it is you're trying to connect to whether it's the full internet whether it's just another server whether it's an entire network somewhere else in the world somewhere else in your city it, it just it is so paramount that you do things with the highest level of security possible every time you do it these days it is just a world where Unfortunately, nefarious people exist and they want to do bad things. And maybe you're not a target. Maybe you haven't been a target yet, but someday you might. So setting yourself up for success in the future is super important. Headscale and Tailscale really have turned out to be an incredible combination for me. Um, this has just made it so easy for me to access systems that I have out on the cloud. Easy for me to access systems that I have on other networks where I want to get connected and I want to be connected very securely to that network. It's easy for me to access systems when I'm away from home and I want to access systems here back at my home. Um, everything goes through this, this VPN network and it's very fast and it's extremely secure. And I really, really think this is an awesome combination now. Headscale itself does not have a UI, but there are some great third-party UIs that have been built on top of it that are also open source. And I show one of those in this video, but it's one of those things where you need to go out and kind of look and see for yourself what do you want and what do you expect out of it. If you're looking for more of the all-in-one system, uh, NetBird is definitely going to be something you want to look at as well. NetMaker is another one you'll want to look at because those have really great web user interfaces for the server side, and they have their own clients that install on pretty much anything you can think of um, it's really great netbird does have an ios client now somebody asked me that yesterday and it didn't at the time that i made the video but they do now uh, netmaker just uses the wireguard clients which makes it really easy to add any device that will support wireguard to their system i mean it's just really a tremendous amount of different options for vpns and, and it's almost that thing where it's there's no reason for you to not be doing it at this point so VLANs and Wi-Fi, this was another huge one for me uh, last year, and, and I really, you know, I've done several different videos on these things using PFSense and, and OpenSense for VLANs and using DDWRT as your, as your access point clients, um, and I really was looking for something to replace all of the things that I was trying to do, but with, with a single system, and OpenWRT just really fit that bill. I went out and I tried the built-in TP-Link Omada setup and it, it, it did make it very easy to get devices added to the network and, and, and when I say that I mean like these Wi-Fi hotspots that, that hang on the wall. Um, it made it really easy to run everything and it was really great and, and setting up the VLANs was a little bit trickier but it did work but there was just something with that system that it didn't, it, it didn't stay up and running for me. It didn't run well. It didn't provide me that connectivity that I wanted and I wasn't sure if it was Omada or if it was the hardware or if it was me 
So I went and tried to kind of troubleshoot the things that I could troubleshoot, which is me, go back and make sure I did something in a sane way, double check all my setup. I went back and checked, you know, just the hardware as much as I could. And I figured out, you know what, OpenWRT runs on these nice little wall plates that they make for Omada. And it runs on all my little hardware that I was using. So I just went back and, and switched everything out for OpenWRT. And I learned how to do the VLANs. And I used plenty of other people's information and videos and, and tutorials and write-ups. And finally kind of got it wrapped around in my head. And I created a video for you guys to help you kind of understand how it works as well. And since this video, this is what I've been using. I still use this today. It is still a bang up network. It is fast and it works exactly like I expect. I haven't seen any of the issues that I saw when I was running it with Omada. Um, I think it's just, it's been terrific in OpenWT. This is one that I'll be expanding on, I'm pretty sure, throughout the next year through 2024. So hopefully we'll have some more great videos coming out about this stuff and about networking and some of the great things you can do with your networking and ways to monitor your networking and really kind of building this out over the internet. I'm looking into OpenWISP. I've been working with it for a while. I'm really trying to wrap my head around it and have it down solid before I post anything for you guys because you always have questions. I don't want to be able to answer those to the best of my ability. Um, so definitely getting that ready as well and something to look forward to in 2024. Finally, this is, is a video that I covered way back when I started Mesh Central. I've covered it several times since then, and I've shown you how to get it installed and set up and using your own um, domain names, and they still continue to update this system. Um, the guys who are working on it for Intel um, don't work there anymore, but they continue to do work on this, and, and the community has picked up some of the work on this, and it's great. Uh, Mesh Central is an incredible RMM. It's a remote monitoring and management system. It is just awesome. And I have had such great, just tremendous experience with this. It, it has just been so awesome. It has remote machine management. It has remote desktop access, remote scripting, unattended access. It's open source, which makes it just absolutely incredible. And I use this to support clients. I had a client literally call me yesterday morning at 830, and one of their systems had just frozen up, and it was a VM. It was luckily a VM, but I got a Mesh Central. I have their VMs running with Mesh Central, and I was able to open up the tools in the bottom right side of the, of the system, and it gave me all of the little things that I needed to see, like, what's going on, and I could see exactly what processes were running, and I was able to find that process that was frozen, click it, and just end it, and that solved it. Their problem was done, and it took me about a minute to find it, and it was it was over. They were solved, and they were fixed, and I didn't have to leave my home and go down to their to their property. I was able to solve it from here because Mesh Central made it so easy to get connected, so easy to fix that problem remotely. It was just great. I, I did try to connect with some other things that I've got first, but Mesh Central was the one that did the trick for me and had the tools that I needed. This has just absolutely been a winner project ever since I've first gotten it set up. It continues to be an incredible project, and if you haven't looked at it, you should. Um, people always ask me, hey, will you cover Tactical RMM? And... I haven't, and there's a couple of reasons that I haven't. Tactical RMM is great, but it's based on top of Mesh Central. They've put a nice UI on top of Mesh Central, but what's weird is for a long time they didn't support Linux, and Mesh Central supported Linux ever since I started using it. So I don't know what it was that they changed or did that made it not support that, but but it didn't. Um, but they do now, I believe, but I looked at their license, and, and while people say it's open source, it's not. Um, it's not a fully open source license. It has a lot of weird extra language in it that makes it not a proper open source license and I've been dinged for, from people by that you know before so I, I definitely don't want to have it again um, because I didn't pay attention so this time I, I really went out and researched and, and they just don't have a license that makes me feel comfortable saying this is open source and you should go use it um, if you like tactical RMM that's great and you should continue to use the things that work for you use the tools that work for you but that's the reason I haven't covered it yet um, Mesh Central I think is terrific it is fully open source it's an amazing project it is incredible and it runs so well still for me today and it just helps me still today with people who depend on me to keep them up and running and for my family and for myself. So this is one that I, that I expect we'll see some more of and maybe in 2024 we'll do a little bit more and deep dive on how you can use some of those tools. Uh, but really great. I, I just I loved it and it's been terrific ever since I started it. And it's been kind of with me since I started this channel four or five years ago. But I wanted to cover this one again and I'm sure we'll see more of it in 2024. But th those are the five that just really jumped out at me that said, like, man, these were so 
incredibly important in 2024 and uh, sorry in 2023 uh they they just they really have kind of set that pace and i, I expect to keep going with that pace this year I'm, I'm always trying to put out about a video per week it is always my goal to be pretty consistent on when i put them out and uh again thank you all so much for subscribing for just be in there for me for asking questions for leaving comments for for giving me good feedback about things that i could do to improve for being patient when i can't always answer your comments right away um really and truly i cannot tell you how much i appreciate that it means so much to me and uh yeah i'm looking forward to everything in 2024 i hope you all have a very happy new year for those uh, who who celebrate chinese new year i uh, hope you have a happy chinese new year in about a month or so uh looking forward to it Thank you again so very much. And if you enjoy my videos, please like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on this open source journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.